I want to thank you so much for joining us today and welcome you into America's Retirement Headquarters, home of the Retirement Guys Formula and America's Medicare Associates with Nolan Baker and Scott Kirshner. Myself, my name is Chris Swan. 419-794-3030 is the phone number. Once again, that's 419-794-3030, online, ARHQ.com. I'm going to go and jump right into it this week. Uh, but before we do, uh, viewers of the show, people watching on, on YouTube, Facebook Live, things like that, will notice that uh, not alone, it's not just... Uh, Nolan, it's not just Scott, but we have a special guest this week. It's Lauren, an occupational therapist at the uh, Clinical Liaison for Mercy Health St. Charles Acute Patient Rehabilitation. If we think about it, uh, I think about the the different times my son plays travel hockey, so we we go to a lot of different places. And Scott, I know we've talked on a, a lot of different shows about uh, people when they need care. Um, you know, one of the things I, I think when we think about this, um, if I'm at a hockey arena out of town, and heaven forbid my son gets hurt, you know, the, the first question I ask is, you know, how do I figure out where to go? I'm out of town. It's in a new area. Mm-hmm. I'm not used to what's going on. And, you know, when we deal with people that are, you know, aging, getting a little bit older, and we think about people that need different levels of care, you know, it, it's also a new arena for them. It's trying to figure out, you know, at what point and where do I get care, um, that's probably the first question that I would have for you is, you know, how do you figure out where to go when somebody needs care? Absolutely. So um, that's why I wanted to kind of come on and just chat about the continuum of care and what mm-hmm. options are. Um, a lot of times we find that uh, patients are in the hospital and then maybe they can't go home right away. They need some sort of rehab and they don't know what their options are. Um, So I wanted to speak more on kind of starting with that continuum of care, the acute inpatient rehab level of care. Um, So there's specific criteria um, for that inpatient rehab level of care that varies a little bit from a skilled nursing facility or skilled um, rehab at a nursing facility. Um, So I can kind of dive into some of that criteria for you guys. Um, to differentiate those. You know, and, and there is, uh, Lauren, there's a big difference in that, right? Because, you know, everybody knows that I specialize and deal with Medicare clients and that. And coming from a, a hospital to a skilled nursing facility is totally different mm-hmm. based on what you're going to talk about and explain. You know, yeah. you come out of a hospital to a skilled nursing, you do your rehab, and then, you know, you head home. And, and we'll talk in another segment about home health care, but it's a different different type of care, different level of care. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if somebody's in the hospital, they are getting therapy while they are in the acute care hospital. Um, it's not going to be as long as in a skilled nursing facility or inpatient rehab, but the therapists in the acute care hospital see those patients. And that way we can kind of determine, can this patient qualify for inpatient rehab or do they need more of a skilled nursing facility? Um, so specifically for inpatient rehab, you have to be able to participate in three hours of therapy per or per day, five days a week. So five out of seven days, um, that's 90 minutes a day. And that is divided between physical, occupational and speech therapy. Um, that is going to depend on one's needs. So not everyone may need speech therapy or maybe somebody is already walking 200 feet, but can't get themselves dressed in the morning and has some cognitive deficits or swallowing deficits and has occupational and speech needs. Um, They must also have needs for two out of three of those skilled therapies. So they have to have either physical and occupational, speech and occupational, or speech and physical. Um, So that, again, requiring assistance with dressing, swallowing, um, ambulation or transfers, and that. Um, one big thing for inpatient rehab is that they have to have medical necessity. So they have to to be seen by a physical medicine and rehab doctor at least three times a week in person. Um, so that is one of the big differences between inpatient rehab and skilled nursing facilities. The goal is always home from inpatient rehab. Um, so when, uh, our doctors or if we're seeing, um, referrals in the hospital, we are always asking, what support do you have at home? Do you live alone? Because who's going to help you if maybe you're still needing some assistance? What is your home setup? Um, how many steps do you have to get in? Do you have a first floor setup? All of those questions. Um, we really, really want people to get home after that, that about two week stay that they would have in inpatient rehab. Um, and then the big thing for inpatient rehab is the Medicare um, 60% compliance rule. 
So they have 60% of the patients in our inpatient rehab facility have to have a qualifying diagnosis. So that may be a stroke, a traumatic brain injury, a spinal cord injury, um, or some other diagnoses that would qualify. There's a whole list. We have a whole book on qualifying versus not qualifying sure. diagnoses. Um, and then the other 40% may be general debility, post-COVID, COPD exacerbation, um, cardiac conditions. So we really look at the diagnoses of the patients that are coming um, to see us. So do you do you have? Um they have to show improvement, correct? Yeah. To continue to get care. I mean, if you got someone that's coming in, because I run into this occasionally with, um, you know, skilled nursing facilities. I'll have someone to call up, you know, you know, oh my gosh, they're booting mom out. Yeah. And, you know, I talk to them and say, well, is mom doing what she's supposed to be doing in a skilled nursing? Yeah. Is it the same for your inpatient? If, if, if you're just showing up and uh, chatting with all of the other patients and they're really not showing any improvement, right. how does that impact their care? Right. So um, the average stay for inpatient rehab is about two weeks. That varies from skilled nursing facility where that average stay may be a little bit longer. Um, sure. They may be a little, because they're not getting the three hours of therapy every day. Mm -hmm. um, they're usually getting maybe one to two. So the stay in the skilled nursing facility is longer. Regardless, with skilled therapy at whatever level that may be, and when Kelly talks on home health in another segment, they have to show progress. So um, specifically at our facility, we meet you know twice a week with the team and they discuss progress to date. Okay. So that you, the therapists are seeing them every day to, to discuss how they're doing and to show functional progress. For awesome. How many, how many patients would you see go through your program on a, um, on like a monthly basis? I mean, um, it depends. So like last month, I think we had around 70 referrals. Well, now not all of those patients are necessarily end up coming to us. We are uh, building specifically is a 19 bed unit. Okay. So um, we are at St. Charles Hospital, but a separate hallway kind of unit sure. down there for the inpatient rehab. Um, but we are 19 bed units specifically. And then obviously just based on referrals, insurance, a lot of factors come into play. I think a lot of this really comes down to, again, having, the, as she talked about, kind of that team approach where you, you know, have a team where you're evaluating the situation for each patient. It, it really is the same thing that you talk about, mm -hmm. Scott. I mean, it's a, looking at the individual client understanding you know how to navigate the healthcare landscape that's out there thinking about the different levels of care sure. uh, I'm biased obviously as you know one of the owners here at America's retirement headquarters it's helpful to have those local contacts you know so whether you're uh, an adult caring for uh, you know a mom or dad or whether you know you're in that situation yourself trying to figure out how do you navigate that landscape you know having somebody local to be able to connect with uh, really helps you kind of figure out how do you avoid some of the pitfalls that are out there? How do you make sure that you get the right resources sure. available for you? And, you know, with when you look at it, the, the financial expense that can be out there, whether it's, a, you know, skilled care or nursing home care, uh, it, it can add up quickly if you don't know how to navigate that landscape. And that's exactly what we do here. So, I mean, if you have a family member or a friend or somebody that is in that situation, just know, you know, here at America's Retirement Headquarters, we're another resource for you and can help kind of connect you to the right people uh, to navigate the landscape of what's out there when you're looking at, you know, where do I take mom and dad? Where do I go from here in my own situation? And how do I navigate uh, the new environment that maybe you've never been in before? And, and just know that we're here to help. Again, it all starts with a phone call, 419-794-3030 to uh, discuss the things that you uh, may not have thought about prior to listening to the show or as you're entering into retirement, these factors that could become major issues if you don't address them. Go and have a plan put in place ahead of time, 419-794-3030, or go to the website, arhq.com.